Hi, Don Campbell here with expand to web and I want to take you through my WordPress post install checklist. So here's how it works. When you install WordPress, here I've installed it on Bluehost and they make it really easy. All I need to do is go to my admin login <clears throat> right after the install and regardless of how you installed it, you're going to go to this um, URL right up here. It's um, wp-login.php and log in to your admin panel. So the first thing that I'm going to do after I log in is go into some, some of these general settings over here in WordPress. Over on the left hand side you'll see sort of like the control panel for all the different things you can do. What I'm going to do is go make sure that my blog title is set how I want it. I just called this one post install checklist but this would be the title of your blog and then this is your tagline. So this is where you would want to update the tagline for your blog and these show up in the header in the default theme. You also want to go in and put in your email address so that you get notified when people leave comments and a lot of other things. It's important to change that. Also set your time zone. In my case I'll um, do it minus seven and that's about it under general. So when you're done you scroll down and save changes. Now the next thing I like to do is there's this little warning up here at the top, top that says hey you're using the password that was generated when WordPress was installed. It's a good idea to replace that uh, for security purposes. So I just click here and say take me to my profile page. Now you could change this password but what I like to do is create a new user. What I'm going to do is create a new user for myself and then what I'm going to do is go in and change a password uh, add, add my own password and what you're going to want to do is make this account an administrator okay so just remember your password or have it sent to your email I tend to just kind of write it down and, and remember it and hit add user so then now you've got a brand new user account that's not the admin user and what you can do is log out and log back in with your new user ID and that's what I like to do so now I'm going to log in with my new user ID and I'm going to go back over to the users on the left hand side I'm going to delete the um, the admin the default user just in case anybody intercepted that email with the password in it or uh, just to be safe so that no hackers you know they know that admin is the default user ID so they might try to break in and so this is just a good way now be very careful when you delete this user ID what you want to do is make sure that you attribute all the posts and links that are existing to your new user. If you don't, it will wipe out any posts or pages that have been created. Now in this case I don't have any created, but many times I've seen people get bit by this when they delete the admin user ID and they don't attribute the new all the posts and links to their uh, new user account, then they'll lose all of those. So you definitely want to do that. Okay. Now after this, the other thing I like to do, what, I'm gonna, what I want to do now is just kind of show you the site. So let's go to the default, let's go to the website, and here you see the typical blog screen, right? It's got the first post is listed here, and if I click in it, I want to show you something up here. This URL, question mark P equals one, this is just uh, the default way the links look in WordPress, and that's like a post ID. This isn't very good for the search engine. So another thing I like to do on my WordPress installs is go into settings. If you scroll down, you're going to see this setting called permalinks. I like to go change this to a custom permalink. So you can see now the way it's set up is it's just going to have question mark P and then the post ID. And what we want is we want to say percent post name. And what that's going to do is it's going to turn the URL into, it's going to use the name of the post and build a URL based on that. So that's a little better for um, for your search engine optimization. So let's change that. And now if I go back to my blog and we dry, dig into that post, you're going to see that now the post is named Hello World. The, the actual URL says Hello World, which is the post name. So that's a little better for the search engines. Um, it's a good idea to do it. And then what I would do next is when you go in, you're going to want to edit your default posts. You can go over to posts and edit. By the way, there's posts and pages in WordPress. And I've got another video that shows you the difference. But all your blog posts are going to be under here. And here you can edit 
that post and, and make it something other than hello world because everybody knows you just installed your blog if you leave it at that. So this you what you want to do is change the title and description of this guy um, to be whatever your own welcome message. Hey, this is my blog. I hope you will join me and that kind of stuff. You can put that in there. Now, the other thing that I like to do is plugins, and there's a bunch of different great plugins that you can install. In the newer versions of WordPress, which is nice, I'm going to go over here to plugins. This shows me all the plugins that are installed, not very many, but you can say add new. Now, I've got a whole list of them. What I'm going to do is just show you how to do one of them. I like this WP database backup plugin because this is a nice way to get a backup of my WordPress database email to me every week. And so what I do is I just search for it. I went to plugins, add new, and search. And in the past, you used to have to go and find this plugin and download it with an FTP program and unzip it and upload it. And now they've made it much easier. So I just searched for it. I'll say install. You'll see that it, a lot of people have rated this as average four out of five stars. So I can tell that it's been used before by somebody. And I actually use this one a lot. Then I'll say install. Now what's going to happen is it's going to go through and give me a chance to activate the plugin now that it's installed. And I'll do that. I'll say activate the plugin. And now it's going to take me to a list of all my plugins and it shows me that this one's active. Now most plugins after you activate them, there's a little configuration stuff that you need to do. In this case, there's a link to it right here. If it's not here, you usually will see it over under settings or under tools. Okay. So here I also see it here for backup. It's the same thing as over here. I click Tools Backup. It's going to take me to a place that says, hey, what are your backup options? Do you want to download the backup right now? Do you want to email it to yourself at this address or schedule? And what I recommend you do is schedule this backup to get emailed to you once a week. Or if you update your blog every day, have it emailed every day. It's not that big of a file. And that'll be a total backup of your WordPress database. And it's just a good thing to do in case anything goes wrong. So that's the deal. There are a lot of other plugins. I just wanted to take you through how to install plugins. I'll list a few more in the blog post. And the last thing I wanted to show you for post install steps was appearance. Now I'm not going to go into this now. That's uh, another screencast. But here you can go to themes and you can search and add new themes. So um, this is where you activate a new theme and a new look and feel for your site. Um, if you are using the small biz theme, then that's also here. You just would go here and upload it and you'd be good to go and you can change the total look and feel of your blog. Anyway, so that's a quick run through of my post install steps for WordPress. I hope that was helpful and uh, make sure to leave me a comment below and rate this video if you're watching it on YouTube. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you.